In a world before news could easily go viral in a matter of hours or minutes, jump rope rhymes or skipping chants were a way of circulating news about current events, gossip, political propaganda, and even advertisements. One of the most famous jump rope rhymes speaks of a woman from Fall River, Massachusetts, who was accused of the crime of butchering her father and stepmother with an axe. We all know the rhyme. Lizzie Borden took an axe and gave her mother 40 wax. When she saw what she had done, she gave her father 41. As always, this episode of A Brief History contains graphic content, violence, and general unpleasantness. Viewer discretion is advised. Lizzie Andrew Borden was born on July 19, 1860, in Fall River, Massachusetts, to parents Sarah Anthony Morse and Andrew Jackson Borden. Andrew was the descendant of wealthy and influential locals, but grew up in humble surroundings and spent much of his young adult life struggling financially. Eventually, Andrew found success with his manufacturing and sales of furniture and caskets, after which he dove into the world of property development, making a name and a boatload of cash for himself. Andrew went on to direct several textile mills that Massachusetts is so known for, the patriarch of the Borden family also owned a sizable amount of property and was the president of the Union Savings Bank, as well as the director of the Durfee Safe Deposit and Trust Co. It has been stated that at the time of his death, Andrew was worth $300,000, which by today's standards would be equivalent to $8.5 million. Despite the family's insane wealth, Andrew was known for being an extremely frugal man. The Borden home lacked indoor plumbing and electricity, though both amenities were popular during the time, especially for wealthy families. Lizzie's mother, Sarah, unfortunately died of uterine congestion and spinal disease in 1863, when Lizzie was merely three years old. When Lizzie was six, her father remarried her stepmother, a woman by the name of Abby Durfee Gray. Lizzie, even as a child, felt animosity towards her stepmother, claiming that she believed Abby only married Andrew for his wealth and position. Lizzie never referred to her stepmother as anything other than Mrs. Borden. The Borden maid, 25-year-old Bridget Sullivan, testified that both Lizzie and her older sister Emma rarely ate meals with their father and stepmother. The tension in the house grew, and so did the girls. Tensions were high because Lizzie's father had been generously gifting real estate to various members of his wife's family, causing anger to grow between the girls and their stepmother. After Abby's sister was gifted a house by Andrew, both Lizzie and Emma demanded properties of their own, and they received a rental property from their father for the purchase price of $1. Mere weeks before the murders of Andrew and Abby, the girls sold their property back to their father for $5,000, or the equivalent of $142,000 today. For several days prior to the murders, the entire Borden family suffered a violent illness. Many speculated that it was merely some mutton that had been left out on the stove for use in meals over the course of a few days, but Abby suspected poisoning due to Andrew not being a popular man. On the evening of August 3, 1892, John Morse, the brother of Lizzie's mother, arrived at the home to meet with Andrew to discuss some business matters. John slept in the guest room that evening, spent the following morning having breakfast with the Borden family, chatted with Andrew in the sitting room for about an hour, and then left just before 9 a.m. to purchase a pair of oxen and visit his niece in town. John planned to return to the Borden house around noon. After John left, Abby went upstairs to make the bed in the guest room and do some light cleaning while her husband went out on his morning walk. It was in the guest room that Abby was attacked. Abby was struck on the side of the head with a hatchet, cutting her just above the ear. The blow to her head caused her to turn and fall face down on the floor in the guest room, scraping up her face in the process. After her fall, Abby's killer delivered 17 more blows to the back of her head, killing her where she lay. Andrew returned from his morning walk around 10.30 a.m., and found that his key would not open the door to the home. The family maid, Bridget Sullivan, 
found the door jammed and later claimed that she heard Lizzie laughing during the exchange from the top of the stairs, where Abby was already dead and should have been visible to anyone on the second floor. During the trial, Lizzie denied being upstairs and had claimed that Abby was supposed to be visiting a sick friend. After being questioned on her stepmother's whereabouts by her father, Lizzie claimed that she helped her father remove his boots before he laid down on the sofa for a nap. Crime scene photos would later contradict this statement by showing that Andrew died with his boots on. Lizzie then told the maid, Sullivan, of a department store sale, but Sullivan instead retired to her bedroom to take a nap. Bridget Sullivan testified that she was in her third floor bedroom at the Borden house, resting when she heard a call from Lizzie downstairs. It was just after 11 a.m. and Lizzie yelled from downstairs to the maid, Maggie, come quick. Father's dead. Somebody came in and killed him. Andrew was found dead on the couch, with between 10 and 11 wounds from a hatchet-like object. One of Andrew's eyes had been split by the attack, suggesting that he had been asleep when he was attacked by his killer. Considering his wounds were still bleeding when he was found, it was apparent that his murder had been extremely recent, and his death was recorded to have occurred at approximately 11 a.m. The police arrived quickly, and Lizzie's initial questioning was very strange. Lizzie continually contradicted herself. At first, Lizzie reported to have heard groans, a scraping noise, and possibly a distress call before she even entered the house. Mere hours later, Lizzie changed her story and claimed she had heard absolutely nothing and entered the house not realizing that anything was amiss. Lizzie claimed that her stepmother had received a note asking her to visit a sick friend, and Lizzie had asked the maid, Sullivan, and a neighbor, Mrs. Churchill, if they could help her look for Abby. When Sullivan and Churchill went upstairs to check to find Abby, they found her laying face down on the guest bedroom floor. Officers investigating the crime reported disliking Lizzie's attitude towards the entire situation. Many claim that she seemed too calm and poised for the situation at hand. But despite the doubts against Lizzie, not a single officer thought to check her person for bloodstains. They conducted a short search of her room, but did not do a full search due to Lizzie claiming that she didn't feel well. Many people criticized the Fall River police for their lack of diligence in investigating the crime. The police did find two hatchets two axes, and a broken hatchet in the basement. It was suspected that the broken hatchet had, in fact, been the murder weapon. But again, with a lack of diligence, the police never removed the weapon from the home. The stomachs of Andrew and Abby were both tested for poison due to the illness the family had endured recently, but none was found. The evening of the murders, a friend of the Borden sisters stayed in the home with the girls in the third floor bedroom. Police remained stationed around the house on August 4th and reported seeing Lizzie and their guest enter the cellar with a kerosene lamp and a slop pail. They then exited the cellar and Lizzie returned alone and was reportedly seen bent over the sink. Two days later, a more thorough search of the home was completed by the Fall River Police. They closely inspected the clothing of the Borden sisters and ended up confiscating the broken hatchet they had believed was involved with the murders. That same evening, Lizzie was told she was a suspect in the murders, and the next morning, Lizzie was seen by her guest tearing up a dress. Lizzie claimed that she planned on burning the dress due to the fact that it was covered in paint, and it has never been determined if the dress that she burned was the dress she was wearing on the day of the murders. On August 8th, Lizzie appeared at an inquest hearing where she was not allowed her lawyer, due to a state statute that inquests must be done in private. Lizzie's behavior was erratic during the entire inquest. She refused to answer random questions, even if the answers would have been beneficial to her. She contradicted herself frequently and provided many variations of what may have happened the day of the murders. The DA during the case was extremely aggressive and confrontational towards Lizzie. And on August 11th, she was arrested and jailed. The trial of Lizzie Borden began on June 5th, 1893. Five days prior, another axe murder was committed in Fall River, Massachusetts. This time, the victim was Bertha Manchester, who was hacked to death in her kitchen. It was impossible to ignore the overwhelming coincidence. 
but a Portuguese immigrant was later convicted of the second axe murder and was shown to have not been in the vicinity of Fall River during the Borden murders. During the trial, prominent points of discussion included the broken hatchet that was thought to be the murder weapon, the fact that Lizzie had burned a dress, and Lizzie's presence in the home during the murders. Also during the trial, the removed heads of both Andrew and Abby were admitted as evidence. Upon seeing the skulls of her father and stepmother in court, Lizzie reportedly fainted. The trial lasted nearly 15 days, and just after an hour and a half of deliberation, the jury acquitted Lizzie of the murders. Lizzie told reporters when she left the courthouse that she was, quote, the happiest woman in the world. Despite being acquitted, Lizzie still remains the prime suspect for the murders of Andrew and Abby Borden. Other potential suspects have been named throughout the years, including John Morse, Lizzie's paternal uncle, Bridget Sullivan, the family maid, or a man who was thought to be Andrew's illegitimate son. And despite her acquittal, Lizzie was ostracized by Fall River Society for the remainder of her life. Lizzie eventually died of pneumonia on June 1, 1927, in Fall River, Massachusetts. Who killed Andrew and Abby Borden? Did Lizzie actually commit this heinous crime? We may never know. Thank you for watching this episode of A Brief History. If you would like to discuss any of the cases in my Brief History videos, my Discord is linked in the description box down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.